Hey there, this is Christine. Thanks so much for tuning into my Mostly Keto Kitchen today. So today I'm gonna to talk about the molecule choline. Choline is kind of in a no man's land. It is not really a vitamin or a mineral or considered essential amino acid or, you know, so the essential idea is that it's gonna, essential foods are gonna be things that you have to get through your diet. So we've got essential fatty acids, essential amino acids, we've got vitamins, minerals. Choline is not exactly one of those, even though it's really similar to them. The reason why it's not fully classified as essential is because your body can make a small amount, but the amount that it makes is insufficient compared to what your body actually needs. So in all intents and purposes, you should think of it as being kind of like a vitamin. So it's very important that you get enough of it. Now, um, it's involved in many important processes. And here are just three. So it serves as a methyl donor. I put the structure of it up here. A methyl is this little CH3 group. And so that can get transferred onto other molecules. And this is a super important process in our bodies. It's involved in all sorts of different types of metabolism, all the way from how your DNA gets regulated to how, you know, to cardiovascular disease. So if your choline levels are low, your homocysteine levels can be high, and then that means that you're at risk for cardiovascular disease. So methyl donation is incredibly important. In addition, in addition, choline is involved as a neurotransmitter. So instead of that OH at the end there, it gets what's called an acetyl group put onto it, and that becomes acetylcholine. That is a neurotransmitter that functions in your muscles. So it helps your nerves communicate to your muscles. So again, incredibly important. Um, also in membranes, so that choline group can get put onto the circular top part here of this little phospholipid that I drew. And then that plays a role in your membrane fluidity and how your membranes function. And membranes are everywhere. So every cell is made up, it's got a membrane around it. And so the choline tends, the acetyl, um, sorry, phosphatidylcholine tends to be on the outside. And uh, that just helps with fluidity between the cells and the way that they function. And that also goes for the organelles that are inside of the cells. So, I mean, I just cannot emphasize how important choline is. So how much do we need? That's a great question. So men need around 550 milligrams per day and women need around 450 milligrams per day. Now it can vary for women. So women who are breastfeeding or are pregnant, they need more choline. And similarly, women who are going through menopause or who, or who have been through menopause, they need more. And the reason why that is, is because estrogen helps the body make its own choline. So that little bit that we do make, estrogen plays a role in that. And so when we lose our estrogen, we're not making as much ourselves. So it's more important that women as they go through menopause and after that they start getting more choline from their diet. So how do we get choline from our diet? Well, as this is kind of a theme here, I am not trying to promote meat eating necessarily. However, I do want people to be aware that meat or animal products are going to be the best source of choline. So here's a graph that I'm gonna show you, and it shows that eggs are the best source, and this is from the USDA. And so you can see that uh, 100 grams of eggs by far is going to deliver the most choline. Now, um, interestingly, uh, just to give you an idea here, it would need to be two, at least two eggs. It's like two and a half eggs to get up to this 450 milligram mark. So it's not like, you know, a small amount. You actually need quite a few eggs. Now, also interesting is left off of that graph is the fact that liver is going to be a really good source of choline also. So three ounces is about 85 grams. That gives you a whopping 356. So if this were plotted on that USDA graph, liver would be the highest. And I know eating three ounces of liver, that's kind of a little on the high side for me. I'd have a hard time with that. But I do like liver if it's in liverwurst, and I like liver if it's in pate, and I like a small amount on a piece of toast or cracker. Um, that's tasty. And so I often am thinking now about liver as being kind of like a, a vitamin. And uh, in this case, it would be delivering a, a good amount of choline. Okay, and so oh, one thing that I failed to mention there is that uh, there was a study back, so ran from, I guess, 2009 to 2012 called the NHANES, and it showed that Americans are not getting enough choline. Uh, men were averaging around 402, so compared to 550, and women were averaging around 278 milligrams compared to the 450. So we are not getting enough choline in our diet, and that may be because there was a lot of science that had come out saying that we shouldn't be eating eggs and uh, you know, I think that's mostly been debunked now. That wasn't, wasn't decent science. 
And, uh, and yeah, and I think if you know, think about evolutionarily, I'm sure that we ate a lot of eggs, right? How easy is it to go to a bird nest, tell the bird to shoo, and then grab the eggs? Like that's easy eats right there. So um, I would imagine that we've definitely evolved eating a lot of eggs. Um, so, uh, you know, and again, this is a place where, you know, if you're vegan or you're um, vegetarians may be eating eggs, but if you're vegan and you're not eating any eggs, then, and you're not feeling great, you know, I mean, this is one of those, gosh, I'm sorry, but you know, you may want to start thinking about putting some of these animal products into your diet just because um, we do need them. Uh, and uh, not everybody does, but there's definitely a good portion of the population that will feel better if they eat more animal products. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in.